All right, guys, welcome to my Cobalt tutorial series. My name is Jay Tutorial. Welcome to my channel. This will be my first ever video on the channel. And in this one, I'll be starting out with my Cobalt tutorial series where I will try to post a video once every week if I can. But with this, I'm also going to include in the description or I don't know, somewhere on this video, whenever I get down to my editing, where to if you want to skip, if you don't want to go through this little quick presentation where I'm just going to talk a little bit about what COBOL is and how it works and all this stuff and pretty much what the overall series is going to be about. Let's go. Alright, so what is COBOL? COBOL is a business procedural language that was designed based off simplicity and also business needs. Whenever we actually go through any of the tutorials, you'll notice how simple some of the stuff is if you are coming over from other languages like C or java or something like that you also know that it's more simpler than how well it's not even a word but it's more easy to read like you know as you like read like a paper or something um it is considered sort of an old language so people have been trying to get away from it for a while but it's just so great at processing files and batch processing as you see right here and also right now cobalt processes 95 percent of all atm swipes and about 80 percent of in-person transactions in to put that in perspective, 92% of all transactions are digital. Why do we need COBOL? If you use any of these services, all of them will more than likely run through COBOL and mainframes. These are the online transactions, flight and hotel books and insurance, taxes, stimulus payments. Yeah, COBOL is amazing. All right, what are we going to be learning today? We're going to be learning about the structure of a COBOL programming, how to read and write from files, how to perform logic operations, some JCL because I'm going to probably hop on my university's mainframe for a little while just to show off a little bit of that. What copy and call programs are, what are load programs and why not load programs, load files, what do they do, and also just general knowledge about COBOL. All right, so that's the end of it. So now we're about to switch over to um, the first code example. I'll see you there. Okay. Now that we're in here, this is going to be our first ever code example of the series. What I'm using right now is an IDE. It's called NetExpress, where you can just write COBOL and I can run it through on my PC. If you don't have access to this, because it's like a licensed product, so I can only really have it through my university, I will include a link in the description of this video to go download a, like a, uh, what's it called, a compiler for it that you can run through, like, you know, the terminal command line and also could um, include a link to just a video to where I watched it because I actually got it to run through um, one of my Linux virtual machines and if you don't know how to make virtual machines like you know that that's like another topic you can go look that up also but now we're gonna start with our first ever code example which will be a simple hello world program which is basically the identity and everything in every cobalt tutorial series so let's start first. I'm going to talk about like a little bit of each one. And I'm actually go through kind of like how to structure of it. So to start off with, actually, let me save this first. Save it in my. Uh, where is it at? Okay, save it in here. Just call it tutorial one. All right. So similar to how, like in, let me open up like a notepad. Similar to like how in C, it's like C plus plus. To start off a program, you have to basically say something like, basically you have to like do you like your includes, like you'll be like include like IO stream and stuff. If you want to use a namespace, you can do that. And you'll just be like int main, uh, like you know, quick little C, um, hello world program. Then you say like like return zero, and then you can be like std cal hello world. Kind of how that would look in C. <clears throat> kind of how the structure is. You have to do your includes, you have to put your int main so that they, they know this the start point of your code. Do like all of the executions, any kind of like if you want to bring in classes or stuff like that. And also I have to always go through and do the return zero. It's the same thing whenever it comes to COBOL. 
it's a little bit different. So COBOL has four divisions. The first one, actually let me go all caps because anytime you pretty much see any COBOL, you'll be all caps. So you do your identification division. This is basically the, the um, division where it names like the, you know, the program ID, who wrote it, and just sort of like facts about it. Environment division. This is the second division. The environment division, this is the division of the code that where you define like, you know, type of files, um, like, you know, kind of like what is going to like happen with them and sort of that deal. So you like define like your inputs and outputs basically. And like if you're using any kind of special cases like vSIM files, which I will maybe cover later, that's sort of, I guess you can sort of consider that as like advanced, but it's really not that advanced. It's kind of like a database as you can say after that you do identification in your environment division then you have your data division oh I spelled that wrong are right, your data division this is the one where you're basically just going to define all of your uh, what is it called like your like you're going to actually give your inputs and outputs like their file descriptors like in COBOL you have to specifically Define like the length of the records um, on PC. I don't it's not really as enforced like through here It's not really enforced, but on the mainframe if you try to like say if you define a File as like 80 characters length and then the file that they're opening is 79 They'll throw you in a bend error, which is basically an error that says hey this file that you just defined right here You said it was um, 80, but when we actually try to go get it, it's 79. So we have a problem and that's like, you know good for if you have some sort of like data say if you have like a, like a whole bunch of numbers like you know like reading in like income or taxes or anything like that you don't want to miss off any numbers so I, I like that they strictly enforce that then the last one is the procedure division oh, spell it wrong again division okay your procedure division this is the one where you go through and you define the flow of the program Sort of like how here, like in our little C, I mean C++ Hello World program, like how this part right here is actually like what's going through is saying Hello World, then returning to zero. So this would be considered like the procedure division. So now that we pretty much got down this, we have like sort of intersections to like each one where it's like a, like, you know, it's like a paragraph and it's like kind of like a subtitle. We have one right here. So this one, you pretty much want to always start off with your program ID. I'm going to call this one Hello World. And actually, is that eight characters? Because on mainframe and stuff, usually like, you know, the names of files are capped at eight characters. And they have like, you can't do any special characters or stuff like that. But that's another topic. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine. So I'll just take off like that. So it's going to be eight characters. Then you have like your author section. I'm going to say J tutorials. I can say like my date written. I can just say today is the 17th of July. Bam. That's a symbol. Hello world. And then like if you wanted to add comments, because this is really this is like 80 characters wide. So and like you know, kind of have to do it in a specific column. So all you have to do for comments put a star and then you can do like this and also like to put like a star on this side so it'll be like a full line comment oh messed up a little bit let me wait oh it's not doing it right but like you know you can do like your full comments this is a hello world actually no i'm doing it incorrectly usually comments will look like this and then there'll be like a blog page basically. Then you can be like, then you put another one, and be like, this is a hello world pro program for YouTube. Then you can just come down here again. Bam. Make like a little comment block. All right, so environment division, since I'm not going to be utilizing any files or anything like that, I can really not touch this. 
but just to show like with the usual parts that you include you want to have like your input you know caps you have your input output section then you have your file control control and then since we're not also what we are affecting with this one since we're not um, using any files we don't have to really include anything but just to show like you know this is a part of it I'll put file section there then for this one and also in the data division they have this thing right here it's called the working storage which is a part of the data division this is where you would go through and define any live variables or anything that you want to be manipulated with throughout the runtime of your program that'll be similar to if i came right here in a c program and i say look i said like int v equals 10 that'd be similar to like where i like put this in the in the working storage area so since right here just to show how this would work Let's just go with like working storage. Oh, I said working storage. I meant to say working storage section. Let's just call it this a section. So for here, I'm going to keep it simple. I'm not going to make you move any variables around yet because all I want you to do, do is just display something. Procedure division. So usually whenever we come through here, I like to just like make a main. So I know, like so I can go back and pretty much figure out the exact flow of everything. So the main... So I'm just going to say display, which is basically the same thing as, um, like, you know, the C out on in um, C++. So I can just display hello world. And then it's going to just stop run. Um, and yes, so now come to compile it. Make sure there's not any, any errors going through here. Wait, something wrong. Project compile. Okay, okay. Then I can animate. I step through. Get my file. It's in my YouTube code. The init. Execute it. It's gonna run. Animate. Run. We gotta stop. Run. Look at our thing. Hello world. So this is going to be the first entry in our next one. We're going to be talking about a little bit how variables work. And we're going to actually focus on the, um, like, kind of like the flow of everything works. And I'll see you next video, guys. Thank you.